Now to a row involving Premier League stars and Nigeria's players claim to have been left stranded at an airport in Libya ahead of an Africa Cup of Nations qualifier. It's caused national governments to get involved with one player saying it's like a hostage situation. Now, pictures have been posted online of the squad after their plane was unexpectedly diverted to an airport, which is still three and a half hours away from where the game was scheduled to be played in Benghazi. Players were left at the remote location for over 12 hours last night with no food, drink or access to internet. The Nigerian Federation have denied giving unfavourable treatment to the Libyan delegation in the reverse fixture last week. Former Watford defender William Trooster Kong is the captain of Nigeria and has posted online saying the squad intend on boycotting the game tomorrow night. He says, at this point, we have called for our Nigerian government to intervene and rescue us. As the captain, together with the team, we have decided that we will not play this game. CAF should look at the report and what is happening here. If they decide to allow this kind of behaviour, let them have the points. We will not accept to travel anywhere by road here, even with security. It's not safe. We can only imagine what the hotel or food would be like given to us if we continued. We respect ourselves and respect our opponents when they are our guests in Nigeria. Mistakes happen, but these things on purpose have nothing to do with international football. Well, Galatasaray striker Victor Osiman is not in the squad, but has posted on Instagram saying, this attempt by the Libyan FA is no longer just a delay. It is an intentional tactic to weaken and ruin the morale of the players, and it's beginning to look more like a hostage situation. The safety and well-being of my teammates and all the team staff are the most important things right now. Our captain has said we won't play the match, and I fully support that, except if the game is taken to a neutral ground. My brothers and coaches must return home safely. We are not criminals or prisoners. Well, let's get the latest on this. Head to Lagos and speak live to Cecilia Omarogbe, who is a journalist and TV presenter for Channels TV. Thanks for joining us, Cecilia. Right, OK, first up, uh, can you explain what has happened here? Yeah, I, I think, uh, good afternoon, thank you for having me on this platform. I think it's a, a, a situation that Nigerian players have faced in North Africa. This is not the first time we've had this, this kind of situation. It happened to Aimba when they were playing in the CAF Champions League and also Rivers United at the time when they went to North Africa to actually play uh, the CAF, Champ CAF Competitions Cup. They had to train in darkness. There was no light. So this particular situation is really strange. Yes, they are talking about the fact that they received the same treatment when they came to uh, Nigeria. But we, we all know that at that time, it was just an hour that that was the delay that they had. But this time around, it's something that we really don't understand why the North Africans, we do, Libyan government, li, the Libyans, the Libyans, uh, Libyans, we actually do this. Uh, but uh, according to what they, they tweeted, that's the, uh, the, the Libyan government and the Federation, they said is a routine, is a normal thing that happened, that flights can be diverted to actually land in another stadium. They are working everything possible to ensure that this game can go on. They want to resolve it uh, uh, totally. But from uh, the uh, Nigerian Ministry of Sport, they are actually talking with uh, the Libya Authority and, of course, the diplomatic... Uh, um, the, 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 they are trying to do a lot of diplomacy to ensure that, yes, either the players are coming back home or they remain. But from what, we've, from what I've heard from the Nigerian Ministry of Sport, they want to ensure that the players are coming back home. They don't want the players to play this game. They want them to come home uh, successfully because the situation is really not looking good. I mean, being left at the airport for more than 15 hours, and they're not even sure when they will leave. So for all of us here in Nigeria, we're actually praying for the safety of the players. Yes, it's not a kidnapping situation. It's not a hostage situation. But the fact that these players have been left 
unattended to at the airport with no delegation to receive them. And even when they wanted to go to where they're supposed to play the game, which is a three hour journey, uh, buses and securities have not been provided. And we all know that in Libya, the war currently going on is really not safe to travel by road or by, by road or using the bus to travel across cities. Yeah, I, I, I heard you say that the, the whole of Nigeria praying for what, what, what has been the reaction? And you talked about sort of an international dispute. Has the government stepped in here? Yes, I mean, it, it's outrage here, right here in Nigeria, because we are all really sad. This is not something we expect from. It is a football game. It is not, uh, it is not uh, politics. I mean, you know, sport is something that actually unites Africans. Sport is something that we all always thrive to want to see, to see the joy that comes, especially with countries that actually are facing a situation. But, but this time around, Nigerians are not happy. I'm uh, talking about what the uh, minister has said. I can just read uh, something that he was talking about when he said that uh, the, 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 the team, they're trying uh, as much as possible to ensure, that, to ensure the safety of the players, not just the safety of the players, but also they're working with the DGIA, the Foreign Affairs Minister, the National Security Agency, and even a member of the uh, Nigerian foot, a member of uh, the uh, CAF, his executive uh, CAF member, Amaju Pinik. Uh, they've remained in touch. They said they are all on ground to ensure that all hands must be on deck to actually protect the players from anything that will happen. So that's the diplomatic relations they are trying to put in place to ensure the safety of the players right there in Libya. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get the feeling this game can't go ahead. I mean, the players wouldn't be prepared. They would be in a state. They've been denied food and water while they've been there. Surely it can't happen. Yeah, it, it, it can happen because uh, the, the players are saying they will not play the game. And even most of us Nigerians, we are standing behind them that they don't have to play that game because they are not in that frame of mind already. Uh, 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 from what we heard from the sports ministry, he said he, has a, he had a conversation with the CAF president who is insisting that they can actually solve the whole situation, is of the opinion that they can go ahead and play the game. But he's of the opinion that this game will not go ahead because the players need to be protected and they need to give them the assurance that these players will be safe and they will be treated fairly. And from what has been going on in the past 15 hours, it doesn't look like the players will be treated fairly. Now, Cecilia, I'm, I'm definitely not saying two wrongs make a right. So let's get, let's get that clear first of all. But Libya say they receive poor treatment while in Nigeria. Do they have a point there? Yes, they do. But, but, but according to what, uh, what we learned from the Federation and also people on, uh, and also what happened, what they said was they were delayed for about three hours. It wasn't 15 hours. And the fact that they were supposed to have landed in Rio, Aqua Ibom State, where the game would take place, but they landed to a city close by in Port Harcourt. And that was not what the NFF envisaged. They envisaged that they will be coming to Rio, but they landed in uh, Port Harcourt and they gave them like they gave them three hours notice before they landed. And before they could get the clearance and everything, they had to wait. And they waited for an hour. But they said they waited for five hours. So we'll be trying to balance the situation to know who is right or who is wrong. But they were not treated unfairly because a bus was actually provided for them. But they decided on their own to use their own bus, which didn't have air conditioning. They used their own bus and they didn't. Uh, they had the security to actually guide them through the route down to Uyo, which was a shorter journey compared to what they are trying to you know, give to the, the, the Super Eagles uh, players. So I understand what you're saying, two wrongs would make a right. If we have to just oppose the two situations. A bus was provided, security, securities were provided, and of course, they insisted on using their own bus to travel down to you. They were supposed to, their plane, their aircraft was not diverted. They decided to land, to, to, to come to Port Harcourt. And at the time, uh, the, the, the NFL protocol officer was actually talking to the Libyan delegation on when and how their itinerary were. They didn't come up with it because this is not the first time it's happening. Whenever uh, we, the, the uh, 
Libya, Morocco, sometimes the North Africans, basically, I don't want to group all of them, but, but we've experienced a situation whereby they love carrying their own food. They love, uh, uh, I don't know, they, they love actually doing their own thing themselves, even up to water. They won't drink your water you offer them. They always, they always like, I, I don't know if they are, they're always afraid that something may go wrong. So they love uh, putting their arrangement in place, you know, just having their own thing. That, that's what we're used to. So if, if they're rejecting the bus from NFF, wasn't a surprise to most of us because we know this is who they are. And this is what they usually do when they travel like that. They just want to have their own thing. If, if we, if, if uh, at the time they came here, we provided all these things, a Nigerian government, a uh, Nigerian Football Federation provided the securities they needed, uh, their plane wasn't diverted. Um, what else? That, 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 was, that was all. I mean... They landed safely in Port Harcourt. They didn't tell them to go land in, in Lagos or somewhere else. Or there was a particular routine, uh, that, I don't know, aviation situation that they couldn't land in a particular airport. Nothing like that happened. It was their own situation that they created. You, you, you have opportunity, a clearance to land in a, a place where you're going to play the game. And you just take uh, like maybe a few minutes to get to, the, to, to your hotel, to the stadium. But you didn't do that. You landed in a city closer to that. And before clearance could be done and everything, the time has elapsed and uh, lasted like more than an hour of them waiting at the airport. OK. Um, I, I wonder where, what the sort of long-term solution to this is. Uh, what have CAF said? What, what are the authorities saying? Could this be played neutral ground somewhere? Or, or as, as was suggested uh, in, in the uh, tweet that we saw earlier, just give them the points and let's crack on. Yeah, yeah, I think what, what should be done now, we're, we're waiting for CAF to actually you know, give us the details of what's going to happen later. We're waiting for, for, for what they will say. But because I, I think, as, as you said, playing the neutral ground would be better. But, but I don't think this game should hold on Tuesday because the players have gone through a whole lot. They need to find, find another day another date where the game can actually take place. Not this window anymore. Maybe after the, the, the November games, they can look for a particular time when this, where this game can hold. Because you don't expect players who have spent 15 hours with no food, no water, and everything. It was 6 a.m. this morning that uh, the head of Nigerian uh, community in Libya actually came to bring water and you no know, phones and internet to the players for them to be able to communicate with the outside world. So the, the trauma and everything they faced, they will not be fit to even play a game the next day. OK, Cecilia, thank you for, for keeping us up to date with, with what's happening there. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.